In this video, I go over why I stopped using Windows and eight things that just make me rage when I'm using a Windows system. So in this video, I'm doing things a little bit differently than many other YouTubers have. Uh, those out there that are big in the Linux community typically hate on Windows just because it is the big dog, it's easy target. And those people that have done eight reasons or five reasons or whatever it is that they don't like about Windows, uh, a lot of times it comes from a, just a very shallow and they don't do a deep dive into some of the really poor design decisions Microsoft has made over the past couple of years. Uh, myself, I've been a user of Windows since 3.11 on a 486, upgrading to 95 and so forth and so on. I have used every iteration of Windows and um, I even got, you know, I'm wearing this shirt a little bit tonight mainly just to say, hey, my start was in Microsoft Windows. In the early 2000s, the very first certification I got professionally was an MCP for Microsoft Windows XP. So that was my very first professional certification. I've gotten probably about a 10, 10 to a dozen or so since then, but um, it's how I got my start. So I know a lot about Microsoft Windows, and today I'm gonna kind of walk you through eight things that just completely drive me crazy about Microsoft Windows 10. So number one on this list is Windows updates. Not a shocker for you guys out there, but I wanna tell you a story that happened to me this week that just sticks with me, and it made me just want to blow up every single Microsoft Windows installation I've had at the office. Um, I had it and loaded on a conference room PC. Uh, presentation was coming around to noon. The prior week we had some power outages, so this machine usually stays on 24 seven. However, uh, about a 30 minutes till uh, presentation was starting, I was getting everything ready. Looked at that PC and it was off, turned it on. And the first thing it goes to is installing updates. Uh, it, it literally hung on the updates, rebooted the PC, and then it had to roll back the updates um, for whatever reason they didn't take. And this whole process took all the way up until the actual, basically the conference was starting. And uh, that is unacceptable. That you should not force updates on people or users. And before anybody comes in here and goes, well, you, if you set the GPO, no, group all, my group policy objects were set and my inactive times were definitely set. I say, hey, business hours between eight and six, never do an update in here. So I've said it twice in two different places. Hey, um, from a GPO standpoint, I said, hey, you should only install updates on Sunday at 3 a.m. or Saturday at 3 a.m. That gives me time. So when they screw up an update, which happens a lot, um, I can actually roll it back before business hours start on Monday morning. To have updates just randomly go out on workstations without authorization when they have expressly group policy objects in place, uh, it shouldn't happen. Just shouldn't, Microsoft. Mm, change it. That's just retarded. Uh, so that's my number one. Moving on to number two. Windows Store. It is horrible. It is horrible in Windows 8. It was horrible now. All you do is have bloatware on there. Most of the store is inundated by just complete crap apps with no vetting. And you're basically forcing a lot of developers or trying to force developers to take a piece of their pie, much like Steam does for Windows gaming. You want to do that for other developers. No, just no. It's horrible. It's a bad implementation. It bloats up systems. Um, I obviously run custom in enterprise windows. Um, and when I'm not, I go ahead and run a debloat script. If you still have Windows Store on there and uh, you have all that junk on your computer, uh, check up in the description. I'll go ahead and link a debloat PowerShell script that I use almost on a daily basis to just completely remove all the crap, all those apps uh, from a, just a standard Windows 10 installation. And uh, Windows Store, just, uh, no, why? Just why? Just get rid of it. You've heard feedback from users for the past five years probably about this thing, and nobody likes it. And it's horribly implemented. Just rip it out. Delete it. 
that's it. Number three, notification bar. It is there. It doesn't serve any purpose. It occasionally annoys people, but for the most time, it just sits there and there's a little number in the bottom right-hand corner. And occasionally you click on it and go, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of tiles and crap I don't use. And then there's a bunch of notifications that I'm never going to click off of because it just fills back up anyways. Horrible. That's all I got to say about that. Security centers next at number four. And, ugh. It started in Windows 7. Windows uh, Security System Center. It's had Windows Defender for a little bit. Now it, it moved to you know Windows Microsoft Essentials and then back to Defender. Um, it bounces around and then it forces you the Windows Firewall on you and some other things. Um, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Uh, I get why it's there, but it's just not a welcome thing as far as the user experience goes. You can make a lot of those things seamless and in the background, but if I want to disable a firewall, it shouldn't scream at my users, hey, you disabled the firewall. Now, mind you, I barely ever do this anymore, especially since Windows programs, especially Microsoft Office, don't like it when you disable the firewall. Um, I highly recommend, you know, doing a full exception for whatever program you're doing, just like you would do in Linux for, you know, using UFW. But um, overall, Security Center is just atrocious. Um, they also have some implementation with Windows 10 using Microsoft Edge as like the browser save browsing experience or something. They're trying to do something with it, but um, they should just give up on it and also sunset it Slim down Windows 10. Get rid of this junk. I mean, Security Center, uh, all it does is annoy users. Occasionally, I guess it might pop up and say, hey, your antivirus got disabled from a virus or something like that. But by that time, it's too late anyways. The machine's infected. Um, so uh, Security Center, kind of one of those pointless things. I don't like it. I think it's silly. Uh, if you're going to do antivirus, make it a low-key antivirus in the background. And if you're going to do firewall like they do, I mean, they pretty much force it on you, you have to do this. I mean, I, I just these things don't need to be pushed in users' faces, but they are on Windows 10. So that's that's it for number four. Number five, and this is one of the things that kind of surprised me. I watched a couple uh, videos of what people have complained about that hate about Windows 10 and this is one I haven't seen on many videos and it is a huge one from a technician in me. Uh, F8 safe mode has always been there from pretty much you know XP on I think uh, maybe even before then I, I can't remember um, but why'd you take it out? You can't boot into safe mode on the boot up on Windows 10 anymore. At least not a lot of systems actually have that capability unless you expressly do some hacks to make it there. But by default, it literally boots into Windows 10. And if it has problems, in like let's say a blue screen or a crash, you have to pretty much just keep having it fail boot until it finally gives you the option to boot into safe mode. Where before you just hit F8 and went into safe mode. Um, or if you're on the desktop, and you want to boot into safe mode, you have to hold shift, right click and hit restart computer while holding shift and then select advanced options and then say boot options and then say safe mode and then reboot the computer into safe mode. Why? Ah, it's, it's horrible. It's just God, God awful. It, you should always have safe mode. I don't understand the design decision to remove safe mode or at least easy access to it, I, beyond me, baffles me. Next up is just general security in Windows. <laughs> oh, man, what a joke. I mean, you literally had a whole bunch of NSA tools that got leaked on the internet last year and made me ruin a couple weekends of my time patching systems and upgrading because pretty much it gave hackers complete free reign. Not even hackers. Script kitties could go grab these tools and start hacking into systems. This is horrible. I mean, how do you let that happen? Uh, and, you know, you can get into some of the sharing, which I will probably dutch that on my last reason here. But uh, 
yeah, uh, some of these hacks are just monumentally retarded. Like, I've never even heard of any other operating system have some of these just atrocious hacks that have happened to Windows. The security is just laughable at best. And, you know, UAC came out with Vista and came through for user account control because XP, it was just everybody got infected. Um, where, at least with UAC, it kind of mitigated some of the damage uh, albeit annoy the hell out of the users right out of the gate, which they've done a little bit better job at, you know, making it not as annoying. But overall, security in Windows has always been just kind of a joke. And really, uh, from a system admin point of view, if a hacker gets to the end user's computer, they're gonna, they're just gonna wreak havoc. And my job is pretty much just to close off all the systems and make sure they never reach that point. And that's why Windows security is just a complete joke. One more thing about security too. You really shouldn't be able to download an ISO tool and then reset all the passwords. It's just, what? How does that happen? Um, just, just a final thought there as far as that goes. Like my father-in-law had someone come into his business and change out some of his password so nobody could log into the systems. I came by, plugged in my USB drive, went ahead, edited the SAM file to basically clear out all the passwords that the users needed, and then boom, you're in. You shouldn't have that security holes in Windows, and it has continued over the years. It's not like anything new. If you're a Windows user or um, you have used Windows for any extended period of time, you probably know, hey, you can just go ahead and reset pretty much any password you want with a tool. That's kind of silly. Just saying. Number seven, biannual system updates. Why? Just why? Okay, you're pretty much forcing people to do full system updates. That's like if Ubuntu came out and said, you can't use 16.04 anymore, you have to move to 18.04. Oh, and by the way, I'm just going to go ahead and automatically install that for you, probably at a bad time when you need to do work. So on the next reboot, we're just going to go ahead and hog up 30 minutes to an hour of your workday installing this update, just because. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant design move. Ugh. And just to kind of expand on that, I know you can do the Enterprise one where it does defer the update for like a year or two but it still forces it on you eventually. That's not cool. Just not cool, Microsoft. So my eighth and final reason why Windows pretty much just sucks or things that just make me rage about it. File sharing. Oh, God, I just despise Windows file sharing. It is just a nightmare to administer. When you get into bigger corporations, I literally, when I was an IT director, was literally hiring a guy, and his sole responsibility was pretty much just managing file shares, day in and day out. Oh, hey, the accounting needs to access to this specific folder of these files, but make sure nobody else does for this and that. And this guy was just in and out constantly, and the files are just not well maintained, where I think Linux's file sharing system is just so much more intuitive and easier to administer on a global level. Um, I just hate Windows file sharing and don't even get me started about dollar sign C. So if you open up a system a little bit, you can literally see every single file by just going into that machine and hitting dollar sign C and seeing the entire drive. Ah, man, there's so many things wrong just at the root of how Windows shares files and a system administrator point of view that I just hate it. But it's what everyone uses for now. Um, obviously, a lot of places I've moved, you know, my main business now uh, that I, I work at, I've pretty much moved a lot of the file sharings to more of a Linux based system. One, for reliability and speed, because it's better than just NTFS. And two, uh, the sharing is just far better and far more stable and secure. <sighs> but that is it for the eight reasons why I pretty much stopped using Windows. Um, 
I obviously still use it on a daily basis. I have VMs everywhere on that. And obviously my main business, I am constantly in and out of Windows. Uh, however, if there's something you guys want or think I should have missed or added to this, please let me know. Or if you disagree with anything I said, uh, let me know as well. Because I'm always up for a healthy discussion and I love hearing your guys' comments. But this is just kind of just, it's more of a rant than anything else. I guess I was going to originally make an eight reasons why, but this is just more of a just off the cuff. Hey, I'm just super pissed off because of some of the stuff that I've been going through in this past year. Just in my job, where Microsoft, I think, has really fallen down on the job and just stopped uh, putting in the time and effort in listening to the feedback from their users. They're number one. They dominate the market, but they just don't care that much about the user experience from what I'm seeing today. Their design team is failing. Their DevOps really need to get a better hold. They need to start listening to, to some system admin, administrators out there and talking to the people in the field. Um, because a lot of these design decisions in Windows 10 is just pure greed. And all they're doing is following their market, their marketing department. It's horrible and it needs to stop. So I wanna leave a video up here for you guys to watch. Um, it's basically a Steve Jobs interview he did about why big companies fail. The too long didn't watch version of this is they fail because sales and marketing take over. And this is pretty much what's happened to Microsoft. I think they're not paying attention to the product they have and they're just completely mismanaging it. Um, and it's just a shame because I do like Windows. Honestly, I wouldn't have a career without Windows. Um, I hold you know about eight different Windows certifications. So. I really hope Microsoft just starts to pay attention to what's going on in the space and fixes a lot of these issues. Because what I just laid out, these are major issues that really should never have happened in the beginning or to start with because a lot of them were just self-inflicted wounds. But that's it for today's video.